All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I don't know if we have other people joining us. At the moment, I don't see anybody. I presume you can all hear me. Um, A couple of minutes to see if anybody else uh, joins us. Since at the moment my board shows that we're only four of us. Uh, we have one person that's joined, Tanya Woods. Hello. Hello, Mark. I'm just going to wait for a couple of more minutes and then we'll start. Hello, Wen. Okay, so why don't we get started and other people can join us. So I do want to tell uh, Mark and, and Tanya that I would like to make this a, a cooperative and interactive session. Uh, so I actually encourage you to ask any questions or make any comments you wish in the written form. Don't ask for the microphone, but in the written form in the comments below. So our uh, topic this afternoon with three distinguished guests joining me is supporting the virtuous cycle. And it's basically, I think we have discussed this ourselves and we're going to talk mainly about sustainability and creating the virtuous cycle. So rather than just talk about uh, anything too specific, I would like to start us off with the general. And we have three distinguished panelists uh, from three different regions of the world. Uh, one is uh, based in Barcelona, one is based in Costa Rica, and one is based in London, England. So uh, we have, uh, and I am Ferdos Haras, I'm based in Ottawa, Canada, where, believe it or not, we still have a little snow on the ground. So uh, I'm going to uh, make some opening remarks and then invite our panelists uh, to give their opening comments. And then if there are any questions or comments, I'll go to the floor. If not, I'll continue to uh, ask questions. So for me, uh, sustainability obviously has uh, three dimensions uh, to it. Uh, and today we are going to focus mostly on the environmental uh, aspect of it. Um, because we're going to talk about creating the virtuous cycle. So for me, uh, there are different parts of sustainability, including the topic that we have been given, which is uh, how do companies uh, create sustainability? Where is sustainability on our agenda uh, today? There's no doubt in my mind that uh, the world has changed quite a bit during COVID. Uh, and that one of the ways that uh, we have changed is, in my mind, the good aspect of COVID is that we have finally come to the realization that we are, after all, one human family. So that a virus that starts in China has affected quite literally every person in the planet. Uh, and that is that shows us in 2020, it has showed us the interconnectivity of the world that what happens in one place uh, impacts all of us. The same, uh, it, it can be said for many other subjects, the same certainly can be said for climate change 
uh, you cannot have pollution, for example, going on in one country uh, without it being impacted on other countries and the world's environment. So in terms of packaging, for example, in terms of what companies do, uh, it is very important for us to all work together on common mutual goal of sustainability and sustainable development. Because if we were to do this in silos, I don't think we will meet the UN Sustainable Development Goals uh, by the time that we uh, have to meet them by. I think that when we look back at the Millennium Development Goals, which were created for 2000, the year 2000, it's very clear to me and I think to most observers that the world did not meet the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, and so certainly some goals were more easy to reach than others and some countries reached them, uh, uh, certainly came closer to reaching them than others. But in general, the world did not meet the Millennium Development Goals. So now we have the Sustainable Development Goals. And at the moment, uh, certainly there are certain aspects of the Sustainable Development Goals and the progress that the world in general, and I'm generalizing, obviously every country is different, the impact that COVID-19 has had has been serious. There are serious reports, for example, that over a billion people have moved into poverty because of the result of COVID-19, uh, while the world was making considerable progress in getting people out of poverty until COVID-19 uh, hit. So this is a serious and dramatic impact on the world. Now, the good news is, as I said, that I think that what has happened is that we know that we can't tackle issues like sustainability uh, uh, alone, that what uh, we have to work together and that we have to create standards and that we have to have companies and governments all working together, civil society all working together in order to meet the sustainable development goals, it is not going to be achieved just by government. It is not going to be achieved just by NGOs. It is not going to be achieved uh, just uh, in silos. And it is not going to be achieved even in a region, let alone by a country. It is going to take great global cooperation. So those are my kind of opening remarks when we're talking about sustainability and uh, how we go forward. So I'm going to ask Nikhil to tell us from his perspective from the fashion industry, like how does a company decide to redo their thinking, to create thinking internally within their company to say sustainable goals are important to us. It is not just a matter of profitability uh, and that we have more than the bottom line and this is the avenue that we want to go in a company uh, to uh, meet uh, in our middle way the sustainable development goals. And then I would like to hear from him. And then we will hear from Christina and Jordi. Nikhil, over to you. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Um, my name is, as I said, Nikhil Hidramani. Uh, I'm uh, a director of the Hidramani Group. It's a, a fourth generation family business um, focusing actually on apparel manufacturing um, in, in the subcontinent. We have factories in, in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Vietnam, and also in Ethiopia. And uh, in terms of, you know, the sort of uh, highlight in terms of why sustainability is so important for us, well, for, for in our case, it's really that, you know, I think in many ways, being a family business and having those old roots, we've always wanted to do the right thing. Uh, and for us, I've always looked at sustainability being very much in, in our values. Um, but it was really in, in 2005, 2006, when uh, an uncle of mine came into the office one day, having read Inconvenient Truth by, by Al Gore, uh, and came to us and said, basically, we need to do a lot more. Um, you know, this is what's going to happen. And we, we need as a family to do more than we're doing, especially on the environmental side. And it was that that kicked off, you know, our sort of more modern environmental sustainable strategy. Uh, and we, we, we opened a, a green factory, uh, a state of the art green factory 
which became Asia's first ever carbon neutral factory um, called Mahila, meaning earth in, in, in singular in, in Sri Lanka. And, and after that, we've just initiated um, sustainability in all our existing factories. Um, our factories are LEED, our buildings are LEED certified. And it's really just evolved. The whole culture has evolved uh, in terms of being sustainable. Uh, now, in terms of, of, you know, is there business sense? Um, for us, I suppose building a green factory was was more expensive, um, probably a third more expensive than 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 a conventional factory, uh, and maybe a slightly longer payback. But after a while, after you see the energy saving um, that you generate from building it, and and the other benefits um, in terms of even retention of of, of employees, um, the education, we really saw the benefits. Uh, today, I mean, I know this this. Sort of panels more related to the whole cycle and and so and for me it's a very relevant topic in today's world circularity and talking more from an industrial from an industry sort of angle I mean the industry I mean if fashion were a country I think it would be the world's fourth largest CO two emitter I mean it is it is really I mean we are one of the most polluting industries in the world and we you know in in recent years and you obviously have seen in 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 the brands that that are out there there has been a lot of focus on being more sustainable and sustainable collections um uh, how uh how brands actually relay their sustainable messaging um it's true to fact as well that that uh, gen you know the, the millennials and gen x um aspire to to be associated with more sustainable companies um, and so there's a real focus. And, and as in your opening comments, as you mentioned about the fact that what we've gone through uh, in the last year uh, and the fact that we've had no choice but to not shop and, and be at home and, and actually not be able to travel. And actually, we've seen, you know, we've, I know being in the UK, we've, we've seen blue sky and, and seen the world, seen the environment. And we've all learned that, you know, many people have not even seen that. And for us, it's been it's been a great for, for, for sustainability practitioners like myself. It's been a, it's been a, a, a silver lining in terms of what has actually happened because we really are now at a stage where sustainability is going to be very much part of of the new norm. When it comes to circularity, we are very accustomed uh, in the last fifteen years to have lived in the fast fashion environment. Where, you know the the linear model of take, make, and dispose. Um, we're so used to going out and, and shopping on a very regular basis, the sales. Um, and actually, ironically, 82% of, of, of what we buy ends up in landfill and incineration. Um, only actually, I would say, 8% of, of what we buy actually ends up in some sort of recycling. So it's an issue that needs to be seriously addressed. And uh, we as an organization have really sort of focused on this aspect now uh, we're working with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, uh, uh, you know, to try and sort of who are the, in many ways a global think tank on circularity in their fashion related projects. Uh, and the other point you mentioned about working together, um, I think it's very important that there's a sense of collaboration uh, amongst all stakeholders, because the challenge with what we're trying to achieve is there is a cost and we need to see the economic sense. We also need to work together. And I really see no sort of competitive advantage eventually in sustainability. I think it's something we all need to do. We all need to achieve the sustainable development goals. Our new plan is very much linked to the sustainable development goals. And I would say all 17 sustainable development goals relate to the apparel industry in some way or form. Um, so as I say, circularity um, is, is something that is, is very important. There's a lot of innovation technology. There are challenges when it comes to cost and, 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 and how we're going to sort of address that and how governments and how we're going to uh, convince consumers at the end of the day. At the present moment, there is a, a, a sort of sense of, of a little bit of a premium. Uh, and that's something that we need to figure out how we're going to resolve. Uh, but it's all, as I say, positive for the future. I think what we've gone through is, is very is, is, has helped that. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, but there's still a long way to go uh, in, in the fashion industry. Thank you very much, Nikhil. So, Christina, from your perch in Costa Rica, you're a specialist in sustainable travel. Uh, we have all been frustrated, those of us that travel around the world constantly. I personally have been to 146 countries in my life, 
and I've never been stationary for this long in my entire life since I was born. So we're all keen to travel again. So take us away to Costa Rica and sustainable travel. Can I ask you something? Now sure. that you want to travel again after one year just staying at home, would you travel differently? Would you care more about the environment or less? I would certainly care more about the environment and I would certainly think that the world has changed in the sense that we are now so used to doing exactly what we are doing, having a meeting uh, on, uh, on uh, the internet, that I think that there will be less certainly business travel and I think there will be certainly much more interest in sustainable travel. So tell us about how you would convince us to come to Costa Rica and, uh, and uh, engage in sustainable travel. Yeah, well, actually for me, um, I feel very blessed because uh, starting a sustainable company in Costa Rica, it's actually easier. If you hear something, it's thunders <laughs> on the background. Anyways, um, it's very easy uh, because as a country, uh, we have been uh, applying a lot of sustainable um, things since many, many years. So, for example, 30% of our country uh, is protected in national parks, right? Um, we have 5% of the world's biodiversity, and our tourism strategy as a country has been developed on sustainable travel itself. So, building a company around it, I won't say it's easy, but it's like a must, and it's the only way to actually... Um, keep keep doing business here. So here in Costa Rica, we have two very things, uh, two things that I'm very proud of. And one is there is a national sustainable certific uh, certification for the travel industry, right? So it's a national standard that um, it, uh, it is not mandatory, but of course you get a lot of uh, benefits just to, just to get into this. And there are different levels of sustainability that you change because it's actually a journey. Right, like be becoming sustainable, it's not something that just happens, right? It's it's a journey and it takes time and it's actually worth it because there's a, it's a constant improving, improvement, right? It's what we call canine, right? Like constant, never-ending improvement, right? So it happens with carbon neutrality, it happens with the sustainability, it happens with circularity. Uh, and that is something that I'm very proud of because it really elevates the standard of how travel companies in, the, in Costa Rica operate. Um, that is one thing. And also that we have a national standard for carbon neutrality. Uh, and that involves all the industries uh, of the country, not just travel. Uh, and that also elevates and puts us puts uh, all the companies towards the same goal to achieve one sustainable goal, which is carbon neutrality. And that is something uh, that it's not an easy, it wasn't an easy task, of course, to just put everyone uh, into one same standard, but really, really helps right now to that we are all aligned as a country towards this net zero race that the whole world is trying to achieve. By 2030, it makes like our, our life easier. So saying that, for us, it was a matter of just embracing these two very important standards uh, into our company and see how we could, could innovate in that. And um, we were actually the first carbon neutral company, the carbon neutral pl plus company in the travel industry to get that certification as well, which um, feels actually really good um, to be able to lead, to lead that way. And um, regarding sustainability and the travel here in Costa Rica, something that, that I'm very passionate about and what I think that travel is the catalyst actually of, of sustainability in the world is that we're, we're constantly connecting with all different cultures and we have the opportunity when we travel either to make a difference, make an impact, learn and exchange that. And what happens here in Costa Rica is exactly that. If someone that comes here that is not uh, very sustainable on their practices at home, they come here, right, and they go to a hotel and they order a drink, for example, and they don't have any straws, right? And they will ask for a straw and someone will say, like, yeah, we don't give any, 
<laughs> right? And they will ask why, and they will learn why. And maybe that is something that will impact their lives. So when they're back home, they will remember that experience they had in Costa Rica and the reason why we're not giving them um, plastic straws for, for, the, for their drinks, right? And the same with the recycling and the same with the uses, uh, usage of the water and the taking care of, of our natural resources, our, our national parks. So what we are building here in Costa Rica is exactly that. It's, it's a life experience uh, with all of our sustainable practices that we're constantly learning and implementing, right? Um, but we have that opportunity to inspire other peoples around the world that just want to, that, that, that when they come here, they will learn and fly back to their country and embrace those practices. Thank you very much, Christina. Jordi, over to you in Barcelona to tell us about technology and how technology can create the virtuous cycle. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, for me, it's uh, really a pleasure to be sharing this panel with, uh, with you guys um, uh, and learning from, from your experiences. Uh, so really excited about uh, sharing also my thoughts on the sustainability, circularity and uh, the effects that uh, if we are not able to, uh, um, yeah, to solve the, the challenge that we have in front of us, uh, could have on, on climate change and is already having. So uh, my name is uh, Jordi Raffles. I'm based in Barcelona, as you said. I'm co-founder and CEO at Innoget. It's a company offering a very holistic uh, approach to open innovation. Uh, so we, uh, in our DNA uh, lies the uh, idea of fostering technology scouting, cooperation, and co-innovation projects among a wide variety of stakeholders, from large corporations to startups, universities, you name it, uh, the scientific community as a whole. So uh, at the center of our mission uh, runs the idea of democratizing knowledge and technology transfer, as we have a strong belief that the great things happen when people can cooperate together, right? So business-wise, uh, we have been, uh, uh, we have been, uh, been always sustainable, right? So. Everything that we provide is digital. So we bet for digital back in 2002. So this is more than almost 20 years ago, even when was, uh, there was no LinkedIn, no Facebook, and in a very specific uh, uh, vertical, which is uh, innovation, creativity, technology transfer, and, and, and knowledge sharing. So uh, we all know, we, we, you have already, uh, of course, touched this, uh, this point. So in one way or another, the novel pandemic has affected each and every individual, government, industries, companies. So it had a global a societal impact that has caused lives, taken millions of people and brought uh, the global economy into an unprecedented uh, recession, right? So that means that uh, um, there's some, some of our uh, partners and clients and, and members within our network, uh, uh, sometimes they ask me, uh, um, how is going to be the new normal, right? And uh, I, 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 my answer is there is no new normal. So uh, the problem is already on the table, so we have to take action today. It's nice uh, to, to, uh, to think about how we're going to do it, so let's try to implement things, uh, look at cost, but I think that we need to refine our purpose. Refining our purpose means that, uh, for instance, uh, from my point of view, uh, we need uh, uh, a kind of a different uh, type of management. So more looking into uh, stakeholder value rather than into shareholder value. That is very, very important. So we need to stop thinking about just uh, the return on investment and uh, just putting more emphasis in what's uh, uh, one of the key elements or engines for any organization to really provide uh, something which might be either sustainable, circular, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, uh, we are all here talking about something which is uh, one of the uh, uh, crises that we will be facing, right? And uh, uh, we just need to just uh, uh, unhide ourselves uh, and, and be more proactively understanding that this will come if we are not really changing lots of things, right? So it's, it's a tough a journey. It's not an easy thing, but uh, 
uh, from our uh, uh, environment, our industry, which is, well, we are involved in technology scouting, innovation, technology transfer. What we see in the market is that the big corporations are more moving from a uh, kind of a structure where planning and uh, marketing and uh, process implementation was one of the uh, were one of the elements that uh, uh, offers a competitive advantage for them into more a kind of an exploring uh, way of doing things, and that is also possible because of digital technologies and the way that uh, uh, yeah, many different technologies are allowing organizations to connect, which is also another thing which uh, we all need to uh, tackle into, right? So connection is, uh, is key and, and sharing uh, knowledge uh, in a more open way is also very important. So I, I would, I would let, leave it here, uh, but uh, I think uh, there's a lot to do and uh, really, uh, really happy and uh, Really honored to to yeah to learn from Christina and Hill about uh, their experiences and uh, and yeah have this conversation open. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jordi. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, unlike other chairs that I've seen, invite uh, the people who are participating in this uh, session to pose any question or comment that you want. Please type it. I can actually see them in the comments. Uh, please type it uh, if you have any questions or comments. I will uh, continue with asking our panelists questions, but I welcome uh, interaction and participation by those of you who are joining us. You obviously have an interest in the subject as well. But let me ask the, the panelists while we're getting those questions, uh, a simple one. Uh, in each of your industries, in uh, in the fashion industry, in the travel industry, in the technology space. Uh, are you optimistic, pessimistic? Uh, do you think that we're making enough progress? Uh, is there enough international cooperation in the industry? Uh, is there something else that uh, we should be doing collectively or individually uh, in your particular industry to, to make the world a better place and to leave the world a, a, a better place than we have found it. So, Nikhil, why don't you start us off in the fashion industry? Um, question, are we doing enough? No, we're not doing enough. There's a lot more we need to do. Um, I, I think one of the challenges in the past has really been the, the how we've marketed to the consumer. Um, and 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 a consumer needs to needs to understand. I think one of the um, I, good that we have technology here as well because I think traceability and transparency uh, are going to be important facts for the future. How do we assess and how do we um, validate um, these claims? I mean, there's a lot of talk of greenwashing in 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 the, in the apparel industry when it comes to sustainability. And I think one of the reasons that is is out there is because there's just so much. No one really, you know, what do, what does it mean to be sustainable, and 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 how do you define that, and how do you validate that? And I think the technology is going to be very, very important. So, are we doing enough? No, we need to do a lot more. Um, I mentioned in terms of the economics um, and 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 some of the anomalies of the economics because um, a lot of the uh, it does cost more to be sustainable. But also the technology that's being um, created or the technology, the innovation that's happening is sometimes happening in the wrong places. It's maybe happening in, in, in laboratories and somewhere in, in, in Europe or not happening where it can be commercialized in, 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 and, uh, and not involving all the stakeholders. Um, with m myself as a manufacturer, I feel that I need to be involved in all this innovation and some and, and how can we bring everyone together? That's why I think it's great that the Ellen MacArthur Foundation set up a, 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 a sort of project involving all stakeholders to work on on this on this particular topic of circularity in the jeans in the jeans industry. So I, I think there's a as I say a lot more can be done, uh, but we have made progress, and and I hope that as I say what has happened in the last year will expedite that um, because I think people now realise the importance of it. Okay, thank you, Mikhail. Christina, what about the travel industry? Um, well, I'm, I'm an 
always an optimist, right? That doesn't mean that I'm not a realist. Um, what, what is happening right now, um, it's very interesting because, of course, the challenge is very good. As, as Nikhil was saying, we're not doing enough. Uh, but saying that also from the travel industry, there are a lot of interesting things that foresee a very interesting future. For example, regarding carbon emissions with the airlines, right? The Corsia, the Corsia, um, um, the Corsia is already in effect. So basically all the airlines by 2030, they have to start measuring and uh, supporting uh, projects to offset their, their footprint. So that, is a big, big consequence for the for the industry, for the airline industry, right? Things like that. There's also a very, very big rise on on the certification for travel companies to become to embrace uh, sustainable um, sustainable practice, which doesn't necessarily mean that they are sustainable companies. To the to also to what Nikhil was talking about the greenwashing part, but it actually sets a standard towards a putting a lot of companies on what they should be doing um, regarding, uh, regarding that. Also, since we have been so many um, months in lockdown, the, the consumer has a much um, wider respect for the outdoors, for nature, for wellness, well-being. So all of these trends are actually a great opportunity for the travel industry to lead a sustainable, su sustainable um, change and sustainable practice. And this is something that I'm very optimistic because uh, it'll give us a very big opportunity uh, on that. Um, so yeah, that, those are my, my key takeaways. Okay, Jody, how does technology come into this picture? How can technology be used better to create sustainability? On the one hand, you have technology that's necessary to create new processes, uh, for example, in the travel or the fashion industries and all the other industries. But on the other hand, you have things like cryptocurrency, which uh, seem to be extremely unfriendly to the environment uh, and gaining uh, great uh, ground. So how does technology work and how can we make it work better? Well, that's a, that's a, a, a very re relevant and good question. And uh, yeah, before going into into your question, I'm an Spaniard as uh, as Cristina and a very optimistic uh, guy by nature. And I think that uh, yeah, having the possibility to be discussing today about the challenge of the climate change and the sustainability today, it's uh, something that uh, it's a kind of a present, right? It's uh, something that uh, it will allow us to move into the right direction. Uh, uh, Technology-wise, uh, what, what uh, we see uh, uh, is that, uh, and we value a lot, is that the messages that uh, all the stakeholders are giving across are positive. So starting uh, from the uh, president of the United States, uh, the new <coughs> president, saying that there is a commitment from, from uh, the country to move into a sustainable economy, and uh, this being supported by the most, uh, uh, some of the most uh, important corporations in the country, uh, it's uh, really relevant, right? Because it, it really fixed the journey into a space where uh, technology is going to be uh, one of the drivers. So what we've seen now is this connection uh, between uh, innovation and uh, sustainability, right? So in the past, innovation was something that some companies were embracing, some others were saying we innovate, but uh, they were following uh, competitors. Today, in today's environment, we see that uh, uh, industry-wise, uh, there's a lot of uh, companies uh, really uh, putting efforts into the sustainability side by embracing new technology and, uh, 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 and even by uh, uh, thinking about new business models. Maybe if I ask Christina about what can they do uh, or what are they going to do in terms of trying to uh, redefine or innovate in the uh, industry? Uh, maybe they are already thinking about uh, new ways of uh, uh, providing sustainable new revenue, right? And this is possible today because uh, a knowledge is generated at a higher speed than it was generated 100 years ago. So it means that uh, if we look back 100 years ago for new knowledge to be created, we, we needed around five, uh, 50 years, right? And then 
uh, this uh, uh, time is uh, re decreasing very very rapidly right so today we generate new knowledge every one year every 12 months and what is going to happen in, in in five to ten years from now maybe we are going to be able to generate knowledge in new knowledge in in, in 12 hours in one day right so the potential is there so we need to find alignment and uh, uh, and that's something that uh, it's very important. So building and constructing a, a, a clear roadmap and yeah, just making these connections that are needed in order to make things happen. So just uh, three, three just uh, takeaways. Uh, we need to increase demand for innovation. This is very important. Demand for innovation in order to just uh, 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 overcome the challenges of climate change and sustainability. We need to increase the supply of innovation that means that we need to somehow educate the market. So uh, there is a, a need to change the way uh, companies produce and uh, launch new products, not only by uh, 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 a technology approach, approach, but a market pool. So understanding that the market is demanding uh, new and more sustainable products and services. And then we need to work globally. I think that uh, with all these elements, uh, yeah, we need to be positive, I think. Yeah, thank you. Um, just for the participants, I had uh, mentioned earlier, but I see there are different participants now. Uh, you're welcome to uh, make a comment or ask a question in the comment section by typing out your comment or asking a question. Uh, if you have any, I'd love this to be an interactive session. But uh, shortly to come back to what you, yes, you have something else. Yeah. I, uh, I would like to ask just one question to Nikhil, if you allow me to do so. Please do. Because uh, being in a, in a family business in, in the fashion industry, which might be uh, quite challenging, uh, uh, even more during these trying times, also for Christine as well, but... Uh, um, how how do you see what, what I've been talking about? How is it uh, within your uh, business strategy innovation gaining more uh, uh, more attention? Uh, are you putting more emphasis in, in the way you innovate, not only in technology wise but uh, business model wise? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that you know we have to look at at how you know uh, you know in in terms of uh, business model in terms of how we're going to produce as well where we're going to produce um, you know they're, they're, you know uh, you know in terms of using technology um, computers robots um, this is this is this is very much the future of how you know what's three D printing going to do in in the fashion industry and I think you know we as 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 manufacturers have to be aware. Of what is going on? I mean, the other the other uh, aspect that's also going on in, in 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 circularity is is that the rental model is is coming there as well. So when when people start renting clothes, which is beginning to happen now, what does that mean for our model? You know, how are we going to be remain competitive? And then of course, you know, reselling and then taking back. You know, we talk about circularity, taking back goods. You know, how are we going to be involved in that? Because we may not be producing as many new clothes as we did. Right. because of, of, of the new models that are going to be out there. So it's something that we are very much aware of, and that's why we want to be involved in the technology and, and be a, a stakeholder in that so we can understand exactly what we need to do because our heart and soul is very much in, in the fashion industry. Many people may come and go, but it's been in our family for generations, and it's something we really believe in, and we want to be there uh, and evolve to be, to be competitive and, and remain a player in the market. Right. Well, it, it ties into what I do, which is basically create mass communications and create what I call behavior change communications. That's what I do. And so I create uh, global campaigns and global information campaigns that change people's behavior. So my final question to the panel is simply this. Is there a new ethos now? Are we as a species, human species, and you can think of your own consumers, is there a greater awareness of, uh, of these kinds of issues, of sustainability, that will drive us forward? Uh, Christina, you mentioned that there's a new opportunity in, uh, in tourism. So are we going to take advantage of that? And is the consumer who travels uh, going to be able to respond to your question 
uh, basically uh, that says, uh, okay, we are going to uh, now have, uh, you know, think about our sustainability, how far we travel, where we travel, what we do once we travel there. Uh, the same with the clothes buying, the same with technology. So a general quick question, we have five minutes left. Uh, to all of you, are we at a, what we call a tipping point uh, for the world? Christina, why don't you lead us off? Yes. Um, yes, I think there is, um, because at the beginning of the, of the pandemic, for example, I used to think that it was going to be, there wasn't going to be a, a, enough time to change behavior. But we, has, we have been such a long time um, learning and changing that there's a huge, um, it's, it's a huge opportunity to just continue embracing um, technology, the way we travel, the way we buy. Um, but of course, there's a, when I say there's a lot of opportunities in every industry, is since we had the best things that we had at the beginning, for example, we needed to protect everything. So we have a lot of waste, right? Everything is just packed with plastic and all of these things, but it's what we have. But if you pay attention, at least here in Costa Rica, when you, all of the delivery companies now, they all have compostable packages because the consumer are asking for that. So that is why I'm an optimist, right? It's like people are starting to behave in a much more conscious way. And I think that we as entrepreneurs, right? We, we just have to create... Um, those solutions for, for, for the industry, yeah. Thank you very much. Jody? Yes, um, yes, thank you. Well, uh, what we are seeing in the market, uh, in the technology and innovation space, is that uh, companies, for sure, and definitely they are embracing sustainability. They have built new capabilities for that, and uh, um, maybe the main challenge that they are facing is uh, to change the purpose, as I, I said at the beginning of my talk. And I would like just to uh, uh, finish my talk today by uh, quoting a, an African proverb that says that if you want to go fast, uh, go alone. If you go to go uh, far, uh, far, go together. And I think now it's time uh, to go together, to go fast uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and far, because uh, we need uh, to cooperate uh, in technology, in business models, in education in many different fields to, to make this uh, 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 happen. Nikhil, are we at a tipping point? Uh, we are, but I, I still think we can't do it. I think we need the support. I, I, I think that, you know, the business case sometimes is still very hard to justify, you know, especially in, in the fashion industry sometimes with, you know, we were still, as I say, in this fast fashion, you know, again, it costs money to be sustainable, right? So it, it, we're not, you know, we still need that support and, and we need that awareness. And, and the role of governments, I think, is important. I think that, you know, certain governments now, it's great to see what's happened in the U.S. recently with, with you know, them joining uh, the climate, you know, uh, the, the obviously going to be, you know, the, the aspect there. But I think also other governments taking policies, um, to create this awareness and, and following and, and, and walking the talk, as they say. Um, I, I think everyone's got to walk the talk and, and show and, um, and make people understand. So uh, th there needs to be those resources. I mean, I, I think talked about education. You know, we need to get, we need to get everyone working in the same. In this, we need collaboration amongst all stakeholders, put it that way, to make it really uh, more effective. Uh, and that's what uh, I hope I want to end with that and, and plead for, for that aspect to, to take place. All right, so we'll end on that plea. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Jody. Thank you for joining uh, us uh, today. Thank you. For this informative panel and enjoy the rest of the Horasis meeting. Thank strong. you. Have an awesome Thank afternoon. You. Thank you. Thank you for the great moderation. Thank you for the great moderation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Keep healthy. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, Take, bye for now.